Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about SSH, what is SSH, how does it work, what we can do, and some useful tools. Before starting, my name is Alessandro, I'm a lead developer at Nantity Digital, a WordPress agency based in London. And on Twitter and GitHub, you can find this right after the talk. So, what is SSH? From the Wikipedia, SSH is Secure Socket Shell, is a network protocol that provides administrators with a secure way to access a remote computer. So what would this mean? Something like that, basically. <laughs> well, this is your SSH. Make sure that nobody can spy what you're doing. So uh, in order to find out a secure way to communicate with our server, we need to encrypt our data. The first encryption algorithm we see is the symmetric one. This one uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt data. A simple example is uh, assigning a number to each symbol, for example, 1 to A, 2 to B, 3 to D, and so on. So consider this uh, chow, this our original text. We apply the, the key, we get our cipher text, we apply the same key, and we get back the original text. As you said, yeah, that's are the same key. This is quite fast. The problem we have here is sharing the key because anyone that knows the key will be able to see our message. Another one is the um, asymmetric. This one uses two different keys to encrypt the decrypted data. So using the same example here, we, we can see that this one and this one are different. The same key cannot be used to decrypt and dec um, encrypt and decrypt the data, but they also they are complementary. The difference with the symmetric one is that this one is slower. Public key encryption is a system where we need to generate a key pair. The first one, the first key is called public key, and we can share with anyone. The second key is the private key, and we must keep secret because anyone that has access to the private key will be, will be able to uh, encrypt, the, encrypt the message used with the public one. So yeah, in the, in the example before, the, the key we used, they are just the public and the private key. This system is used by SSH, and HTTPS, and there are several encryption asymmetric algorithms. So how does SSH work? Basically, when we do run the command SSH, both the, our computer and the server, they will start to negotiate a session, use the asymmetric algorithm. So, so the first part is done with asymmetric they do agree on which symmetric algorithm to use, and they start to generate a asymmetric key they, that only they know. So the first part is asymmetric, and also they carry on with symmetric just because, because it's faster to use. Also sometimes can happen the um, key ring. If you stay connected too long or you uh, reach the maximum data can, that you can transfer, then we start to generate a new symmetric key. Because the symmetric algorithm is secure as long as you don't use for a long time. That was my reaction when I figured out what was going on. <laughs> so how we generate the, now we saw how SSH works, let's see how we can create our keys. The command you, can, you, you need to use is SSH key, key gen. Here there are two useful parameters. The first one specifies the type of um, asymmetric algorithm to use. In this example is RSA. We can choose between different, there are, there are for example, DSA, ECDSA, and so on. Uh, the point is, um, before choose a different one, make sure that either your client and your server support them. 
The second parameter is the size of the key we want to generate. This one also depends by the type of uh, asymmetric algorithm we want to use. Yeah, yeah, RSA is still considered strong, it's still used nowadays. And how I said, different one might be not supported by the server or the client. So, one second. Why we choose 4096? Because some version of the RSA has been broken in the past years. For example, the 576 in 2003, the 768 in 2009, the 1028 has not been factored yet, as far as we know. This might happen soon. Uh, now the standard is the 2048, so if you want to generate a key, use at least 2048. We just choose for 4090 just because it's better. It's double size. OK. Now that's, time. that's uh, the first. The, once we, we, we run the command, maybe ask which, where to save the, uh, the, the key and which file name. That's up totally to you where to save a which file name. You can go with the default one. You can also generate a different key for different services, or if you want to keep your company and private key separate. It's really up to you. There is no uh, rule here. Another thing uh, will be asked is the protect, protecting SSH key. How many of you already use SSH? Cool. And how many use a passphrase with a SSH? OK, that's good. <laughs> so basically, the point is, as we said, the private key, we must keep secret, because anyone that has it will be able to, to spy on us, basically. When we use a passphrase, we basically we encrypt our private key using an AES algorithm. So if for some reason someone is able to access to the file, they won't be able to, to use it unless they also know the passphrase. So, uh, the problem here is that if you lose the, your, I forget your passphrase, you won't be able to use your own key as well. So you need to generate a new one. But also you can change the password in the future if you want. Also, another point is uh, that now we protected our private key. It means that every time we want to use our private key, we need to insert the password. And this might be frustrating sometimes during the day if we don't remember everything. <laughs> Luckily, SSH gives us a um, powerful tool. It's called SSH Agent. This tool just holds the private key for us, that does hold the private key in uh, memory, does not store the private key anywhere, does not write in the disk. The, the keys are not shared with any client programs. A, all the operation that requires the, public, the private keys for either encrypt or decrypted data will be handled for, uh, by the SSA agent. And the communication happens via socket. Socket is a special file in the Unix system. It's used to allow two different applications to communicate between them. Also, with SSH, um, you can add, or if you have more than one key, you can add all of them. And SSH will figure out which one to use when you're using SSH. So to start the agent, that's the command you need to run. And also, you need to add your uh, private key. And in this case, you'll be asked to insert a password. And that will be the only time until you reboot your system. OK, now let's see how we can use SSH. To use SSH is very easy. You just need SSH which you use you try to log in on the server, the domain or the IP address. 
And once you log a date, you will see something like that. Depends by the server you log, a, log in, which shell is configured. So what we can do with SSH? Basically, we can install application on the server. We can configure the remote server. But something very useful is manage files and folders. For example, a problem with SFTP is that if you try to delete a huge number of files, it's very slow. You don't have this limit with uh, SSH because basically you're running a command on the server set way. Also, if you need to upload a lot of files, it can, can take a long time. So you can easily zip, you can just upload a zip file, and once you log it in on the server, you can unzip. Or you can make a zip of the files on the server and easily download them. And this is very useful. Yeah, you can take a backup, you can modify files on the files on the server. Sometimes you can uh, you also have access to the database. So you can use a MySQL dump to the adapt the database or MySQL to import the database. Also, another useful thing is can be used to deploy your local code. A lot more. One of the tools is rsync. Is, uh, rsync is um, a fast, versatile, remote, and local file copying tool. It's very powerful, and you can easily sync whatever your local folder on the server. Some useful option is that you can only sync what has been changed to local, what is, uh, does not exist on the server, and you can use the same to, do, to pull the data from the server. The other problem is it's not very easy to not very easy to use, but luckily there are plenty of tutorials on uh, on internet. Other one is uh, SCP. This one I usually use when I need to just copy one file or one folder because this syntax is easier. There is really not too much to remember. Also, we are WordPress developers and we have this powerful tool. It's called WordMove. This one basically. Under the hood, use um, rsync, but the configuration is just a plain text file where you configure the, your local path, the remote path, and you can pull a push plugin, upload folder, and theme, and we use rsync and uh, SSH for you. Another um, situation might be useful if you need to copy data from server A to server B. And assume that we have access to both from our computer. The problem is that server A cannot co com communicate directly with server B, so we cannot transfer directly the files. So we should log, log in in the server, copy the files, download, upload on server B, and to do the, the copy. Another option might be create the key on the one server, authorize the keys on the other server, and vice versa. And this will allow them to communicate. But luckily, SSH gives, you, gives us another tool. It's called SSH Agent Forwarding. This basically allows us to use to forward our agent, our local SSH keys, to the server. So, in this situation, basically, we, what we need to do is we forward our agent to a server A, and now from server A, we'll be able to connect to server B, or just use one of the tools uh, to, uh, I said before, from server A to server B. So, suppose you need to do a migration, you can forward the key on one server and use rsync to migrate WordPress and everything you need on the other one. Also, SSH can be used to, you can be chained, so you can forward from server A to server B and so on, so on, so on. And to use, it's very easy. It's just, you need to append the shame to the SS command. Or you can configure the, the yeah, you can put the configuration in the SSH config. Uh, the problem here is for anyone that on the server you forward the key that has um, a sufficient uh, permission, like admin, like root, 
they may be able to be used uh, your agent. So don't just forward all the time. Just do if you really need. So yeah, as we said, we, we can loop infinitely the forwarding. So yeah, the, that's all. Remember that we, when you have SSH access, on uh, some client might give you admin access, and if you mess up the server, it might be a problem. Especially if you don't have physical access to it, you'll not be able to do uh, to access anymore. And here are very, some useful resources. The first two are this uh, show you to you this RSA works. The third one is a bit more in depth with a real uh, example uh, about the, the algorithm. The SSH by Michael is uh, about the, the server, security implication, and uh, if you want to configure your own server. And that's why it's worth moving the, the, the tool for uh, WordPress. That's all for me. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Alessandro. Does anyone have any questions? Right, we have a microphone that works, so I'm going to get my step count in. Hi, uh, so you, you, obviously you're on Linux. Uh, those sort of commands will work well on Mac OS as well, because that's uh, Unix-based. Um, do you have any experience of doing this on Windows? I know a lot of people use Windows for development. No Windows at all. Mac OS, yes, but Windows, I haven't used for a long time. I mean. If you install SSH, open SSH, this is the most popular implementation, you should be, you, you get the... Yeah, but you should be able to use SSH and without any problem. Or you can use the, is, um, there is um, a UI, it's called the P-U-T-T-Y. Yeah, put it. You can try that one. I don't see why you should have a problem with Windows anyway. I've just noticed as well, sorry, just because it'll be easy for people, that Ubuntu does a, uh, an app for Windows as well now that lets you run a lot of Ubuntu commands, which is worth a look at here on Windows. That, I was, that's what I was just going to mention. There's a, a Unix, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to mention that there's now a uh, Linux subsystem for Windows 10, I think. I don't think it works with the old ones, but gives you, yeah, access to those, and it is based on Ubuntu, so... Okay. You can get at it. It's a bit slightly trickier with putty, but it does work with putty. If you don't like putty, there's a terminal called Hyper. Much nicer. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? <laughs> I mean, we can talk about different terminal things all day long. I'm happy for that, but questions? Is that working? Yeah. Um, you mentioned different numbers of bits that you could use to encrypt, yep. and you said you use 4096. Um, is there any reason why you wouldn't use that number? Like, if you used a smaller number, is it faster? Is there any kind of...? No, it's more a security implication, because some, um, <laughs> like the 576 has been broken. The 1024, just because the... Um, the computational power our, our, our machine is getting bigger and bigger, and we know how to break RSA. The problem is that it's not doable because if you want to break the 4096, you, you need years, a lot of years. That's the problem we have. We know how to do it, but we cannot do that because it's not doable. So the, yeah, the bigger number you use, the, the, the less chance that your uh, key can be, uh, can be broken. That, that's the only reason. Ridiculous then to like have 10,000 bits. What? I think there is a limitation uh, by your client and your server. Not sure about that, but I think there are limits that your machine cannot support higher. But not sure about that. <laughs> right, cheers. Any other questions? No? Are we all just being really shy? Can I do a tip that's not a question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, actually, I was at a cybersecurity conference, and you know how people say, oh, you should have a longer, stronger password? Actually, cybersecurity people are always like, well, at the conference, they were like, if we start doing 50 character um, passwords, then it speeds up the hackers to, like, 
try and break the 50 security faster. So they were like, please just do like a sensible amount so that we have longer to take. And I think it's the same with the forum. Uh, so just a tip, you, you briefly mentioned the config file in yeah. the SSH folder, which is really useful if you've got a lot of different connections using different key files because you don't have to specify which key file. So in the config file, you can say, for this server, use this key file, for this server, use this key file. And that's, I find that really useful, uh, because if you get too many and you let it try and work out which one to use, you can run out of attempts and get locked out of your own server. Been there, done that, not good. <laughs> Thanks. Anyone else had SSH woes? Should we have a bit of a heart to heart right now? <laughs> Oh, we have one up there. Cool. Uh, it's not a question. It's more of a, a, a similar <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to connect via SSH and it's not something that you're used to, um, that command uh, at the beginning where it was like SSH user at um, host, specifying the port number can be useful because it might you might need to two or two or, and otherwise you might not be able to get in. So, which can be frustrating if you don't know it. Been there, done that, got the badge. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like it's like a badge collection day. Had anyone else? Does anyone have any favourite SSH things they like to do? I did RM minus F <laughs> on my machine. That was not fun. And then I did slash because I thought it meant that folder and I realised actually it meant the root of the computer. It's a good thing Apple has a permissions doesn't grant it. You can't just go and delete things like that with RMI. Yeah, another one there. Come on, you need to work hard on your questions so I get one step in. Sorry, uh, one tip if you are logging in, uh, run your commands using screen. So if your connection drops, the command will still run, otherwise it'll drop with your connection. Alessandro, do you have any favourite things that you like to do with like SSH and terminal? Anything that you wish like your past self used to know? Uh, I use a lot because uh, I connect to the remote server or company. That's why I know enough. <laughs> also, I, I use no standard port, so I, I need to use the dash p parameter. But also, I had to migrate a website a few months ago from the two different servers, luckily I had the SSH access, so I did the migration between one. Uh, I, did, I did the like in four hours, uh, we will try to use a plugin, it was estimated like 16 hours. I did the same just in four hours, and eventually, uh, just because we, we did like a fast migration to test if it was working, so we had to do the real migration. Real migration, I just using rsync, I just uploaded the, new, the file that we have were changed on the file, so I, I didn't have to do everything from scratch, it took like 10 minutes. So it can be very useful for that. Do you use any scripts? Sorry, I'm just, since none of you have any questions, I'm assuming. Put your hand up if you do. No? At any point, put your hand up if you do. I, I will come up. What about if um, you, like, do you, have a, do you use anything like a scripts or like um, WPCLI when you're SSH hitching? Uh, no, I use the uh, word move. Uh, I use WPCLI, but just to create a WordPress install locally, never with uh, SSH, so I don't know too much about Does anyone here know what WPCLI is or doesn't know what WPCLI is? Does anyone need an explanation? Cool. Um, so yeah, some people nodded their heads there. So WPCLI is WordPress on the command line. Um, WPCLI, CLI, if you Google that into Google, search that into any search engine of your choice, um, okay. it will come up with some very useful things and it does a really good search and replace on databases, which is probably my favourite thing. Um, it makes it very, very easy to do it. And you can also dry run, which is dash dash dry dash run, because, you know, we love our dashes. <laughs> All right, last couple of questions. No? Thank you, Alessandro. Yeah, um, thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>